happen. We make a resolution to call someone before they maybe they're sitting by themselves. I noticed I was walking one shop this year a few month ago or so, and I saw there were Russian ladies walking in the street. There must be people that you could reach out to on your own block. You know, we sometimes have to go there. On your own block, I bet you, I bet you there's someone who would love to get a call from you to say, Yomtev, how are you? How can I help you on your own block? We used to have uh, a neighbor who lived on the third floor of, of the house, and, and she had a nurse, and she was by herself, a from lady, and she uh, was knowledgeable. But so we went to go shuffle for her. Who would think in Borough Park? With all these chassidim all around. Who's thinking about her? She's in the third floor with a nurse. And she learns and dominates, but she doesn't blow the shofar. So my <coughs> wife and I would go up to her and Shoshana and blow the shofar for her. Right two houses from our house. You don't have to go to Timbuktu. You don't have to go to Vegas to blow shofar for Jews who are at Vegas. You don't have to go to, to the... Right, right here, I'm sure... In Ramat Bet Shemesh, I am sure there are people who could use that. I want to say another thing. Sometimes a person is orthodox and comes to shul. What I've noticed sometimes, there's certain mitzvahs. That, I don't know. I don't know why, but it's like they think it's a man's mitzvah, but the woman doesn't do it. Do you know that a woman has an obligation? Okay, you can, you can argue it's not. It's not a, a, a biblical. It's a mitzvah. as mangram. It's a time-bound mitzvah. So therefore, you have the woman make the blessing. Why shouldn't she hear shofar? And again, we're learning in halacha. If, let's say, the woman comes in late to shul and didn't hear the bracha, it's problematic. So you could ask your neighbor, did everyone hear the shofar with a bracha? From the beginning to the end. And if not, and you know how to blow the shofar, you can get someone else, blow the shofar for them, and have them make the bracha. I'm just showing you that there, there, there are so many instances where we take for granted. I remember another story um, in Kranites, a neighbor of my mother-in-law's, a young man. He wasn't obviously, he came from a from home, but he was not religious. And I said to him, and he knew what I said to him, I want to blow shoulder for you. So he said, okay, fine. So I gave him a yarmulke, I had to make the brachas, and I blew the 30, the 30, the koilis, the 30 sounds for him. Well, he's living right there, but he's not interested. And he's a kid from a Chabad home, but right now, this is where he's at. <coughs> so, I, I can't imagine all of Beitar, there, there, there aren't some uh, young people. There's a lot. There's a lot. So, you Natan, you take a chauffeur, you go I to, don't know how to do it. You, so you, get, you take someone else with you who knows how, and you say, come. And you go to those people, and they're hanging out over there and, and doing, and you, and, and you blow the chauffeur for them. And, you, and your friend blows the chauffeur, with a, and you have to make a bracha. It's, I'm telling you, it's so simple. Hi, you kill him. But it's a matter of, of, of just like consciousness. Are you conscious and aware to do these things? Anyway, enough said about this, but, but really, guys, Try to implement some of this, and I'm sure you're, you'll feel so elated. You'll feel, this Rosh Hashanah, I, I was able to have the chauffeur blown for someone who didn't hear, who not hear the chauffeur. This show, Rosh Hashanah, I was able to have someone who doesn't have a place with the eat to have a place to eat. This Rosh Hashanah, I was able to help someone in shul understand more of what's going on. When you walk over to someone who doesn't know when to stand, when to sit, that's also making, we're talking about making a cabinet, a bris. That's also making the bris with Hashem. The person doesn't know. Come to shul. Person's lost. Do I stand? Do I sit? They become embarrassed sometimes. Everyone's doing it. They're, they're, they're standing there. They don't know what's going on. And you walk over to them nicely without embarrassing them. You put your hand around them or you, you whisper and, 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 and you share. You say, would you like, would you like me to help you? you know, would you like me to help you um, to tell you where you stand, where you sit? That's the Obrachah B'Bris Hashem. 
So, of course, there's the grandiose picture where, uh, you know, I'm going to speak in front of 500 people on Shoshana, and, and then because of that, they're going to come to Shul the next day, and they're going to listen to the chauffeur, and they're going to go to Yom Kippur, and they're going to come by with Shuva. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. That's only one of the ways. There are ten ways. Roshechem, Shiftechem, Ziknechem, Veshetrechem, Tachem, Veshechem, Vegercha, Chaytevetzecha, Shrevimecha. Ten different styles. So, and we are, we are older. We're in a Kailu. We learn. So really, we have the knowledge to share with others. Others who are in a different place in their life might not have the knowledge, so they depend on us. So let us implement the Atem Nitzavim Hayoyim Kuchan Lofnei Hashem Alekeitem. And when you do that, you're not just standing like a wimp. Nitzavim! They're standing with Koyach. We ask the question, why the word Nitzav instead of Omeh? And we explained the first, Nitzav Melech. And, you know, I observed the Lubavitcher Rebbe so many years. I was in his presence. I observed him. When he would stand, really, he would stand with a presence. Not with Gaiva, but with... Not, not like a shlum. Definitely not, not like a shlum. Definitely not like a shlum, but I'm saying, Nitzav Melech, the Torah. We have to be proud. We are Jews of the Torah. We have to demonstrate that. And, you know, and I'm sure you, some of you have had this, the non-Jews, Goyim, many times, when they see a Yid come into a room and stand proud as a Jew, they respect it. I have a friend of Manhattan, the same friend who I told you, who was a doctor and a lawyer. Well, I told this to the women, I don't remember who I told it to. Anyway, at eight, in his 40s, decided no more doctor, no more lawyer. He wants to be an insurance agent. And he became an insurance agent, and he's very up in the upper echelons of life insurance. He writes for the IRS some, some of the rules. And he decided, that's a whole long story, I'm giving you the bottom line. He decided to grow a beard and to stop learning and became pious and religious and fruit. And he dealt with a lot of you know, others. And I asked him once, like, you know, I mean, some people have a beard, you know, long beard, they roll it up. Especially if they're in the business world, they roll it up, you know? Fine. He lets his beard grow. And he's like, you know, he's midtown Manhattan. And he said, you know, they respect, if you're honest, they respect you with your long beard. They don't look down at you. And if they look down at you, it's their problem. Nitzav Melech, you're a king. Go like a king. Go with pride. Go with strength. Don't go with, I have to, I have to conform. As long as, like you said, not like a shlum, like a mensch. Be respectful, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Reminds me, there was a, a neurologist who I knew in California, and he was very, <laughs> he, he made, you know, made, uh, he made, he made good, a good living, and he would spend so much of his money on Sadaka that his wife had to take away his checkbook. <laughs> and he once came over to me, and he said, I, I was a student at Yeshiva, and he said, I want to ask you a question. My car is a jalopy. It's banged from this side and that side. I come to medical meetings with prominent physicians. I come there, and they're driving, you know, it's in California, they're driving a Bentley and, and a Mercedes and Lamborghinis. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But at least I don't want to come with a, uh, a chopped up car that's a chil lashem. So he asked me, is it right for him to buy himself a new car. He's not buying a Mercedes or a Lamborghini, or, but, but a clean car. And what, and I said, of course it is, but, but he was so, he was such a bad tzedakah, he didn't want to maybe take away money from giving to tzedakah that they're spending money on the car. And I told him, you're a yid, you're a physician, you're coming to meetings, you represent something. You need to show that you are, uh, that, you're, that you're strong. Coming with a, with, a, with a broken car. Listen, if you don't have the funds, I understand. But this is also tzedakah. Part of tzedakah is, what's the word tzedakah mean? Righteous. Righteous. Hashem's righteousness. So giving to 
tzedakah means to bring out Hashem. If you're giving tzedakah just to, 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 to push your ego, it's not tzedakah. Tzedakah is that it's coming from the right place. No, by spending money and having a proper car, so that when they come into a meeting, they have for you honor and respect. It is proper. I understand, I said, you know, not indulging and wanting to get a, exactly a fancy, fancy car with a, with a, with a label and, and all that. That I can hear that that's an indulgence for you, and you'd rather give the money to Tzedakah. Although, or although, my wife bit. yeah, although, although, I'll tell you another story. When I came to California in 1984 as a shliach for the Rebbe in Marin County, so there was someone there, I think he came from Portland, Maine, and um, mm -hmm. I heard that, you know, that he can help, he can help with Tzedakah, so I went to see him to help us. And he gave me an appointment, and he said, he told me during the appointment, I wouldn't give you an appointment. He belonged to the Reformed Temple, he wasn't interested. He said, I wouldn't give you an appointment. So I said, why are you giving me the appointment? He says, because one of your predecessors, another Chabad rabbi who was in San Francisco in the early 70s, until 79 or 80 or so, when he would come into my office, he was dressed better than I was dressed. His suit outdid me. And I said to myself, if this guy can dress better than I, and I'm a, I'm, I'm a wealthy man, and I think I know the world, and I'm a big shot, and he can outdress me, he's worth me giving him a check. He's worth his money. And he says, so when you, you're, you're Chabad too, you, you're not dressed as I wasn't dressed as fancy as him. I was just dressed with a regular suit and tie. He says, but that, and I, and I thought about this, and I still remember it till today the message from the story, the way I took it. Sometimes, sometimes you have to impress someone to that point to, to open the door. Now that, that's, that's a challenge. That's a challenge in our life. How, how much gashmias, how much materialism do we need to, 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 score, to score? How many, to, to make a sale? God's sale, how could Baruch Hu's sale? What do you need? And that's something that's debated about in our communities. And, 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 and the Swarm talk about it too. But one thing's for sure, one thing's for sure. Even if you don't need that level of, you don't need the fancy suit to impress someone to learn and daven and, and write a check to tzedakah, right? But one thing's for sure, you need to come with a, a presence and what we call in Yiddish, a shtotzkeit. There's a Yiddish word, it's a very important word, shtotz, shtotzkeit. What does shtotzkeit mean? Um, Inner strength, um, strong, stout, strong. When they see you, they it doesn't mean that you have to be aggressive. It means that they see you, they know that you believe in what you are doing, and they respect it. People respect people who who believe in what they're doing, even if they disagree, and they don't agree with your approach, but they respect it. I think that's very important as we go into Rosh Hashanah to combine kind of self-esteem, self-improvement, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu's esteem. To know that Hashem wants us to be mentally very healthy, uh, socially very healthy, and Jewishly very healthy. And they're not a contradiction. They're not a contradiction. If you observed Rabbi Salavachin, but you observe the Lubavitcher Rebbe, if you observe people like this and others, you saw that Rabbi Soloveitchik, you know, I wrote about this in my book, he wore a regular suit, a simple suit, a simple tie. I saw a picture of the couch in his apartment at the University, it was a torn couch, and I heard from people who drove him you know, to and from the airport or here and there, he could go into a jalapi with torn you know, seats, it didn't make a difference to him. The Rebbe, the Babachi Rebbe, when they brought him a new car, they bought him a new car one time, he said he, did, he refused to go in, he went out. He didn't know, they took him, he went out, he did, every night they took him home, right? He went to the car, and he said, what's this? And so Rabbi Krinsky, the driver, said, um, the other car wasn't working. He said, it's good enough for me. And he walked back into his office. He would refuse to go into the new car. He finally convinced him. Or the fact that he, a pencil that he would write with, he would use it till it became like this. So one of his secretaries, Rabbi Rothstein, 
couldn't take it anymore, so he came into the Rebbe once with those little carnival pencils, you know, the big ones, and he gave it to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe burst out laughing. Like, you know, come on, Rebbe, your pencil's are already so small. Oh, where was he coming from? Why did I use the pencil? Pencil still writes. So, if you think about it, you think about it, it's not being cheap, it's not being frugal, it's using everything to its ultimate, and making everything a vessel for Hashem. So that's why I say that in our self-esteem, in our healthiness, which is a must, that's where it begins. You have to, and with the teenage and the young people today, we need to create in them ways where they feel good about themselves. And that's the first thing. I, I, and I, I don't care what any of the other rabbis say, if they say it. I don't think a smart rabbi would say otherwise. But before you can deal with religiosity, you have to be mentally healthy. You have to feel good about yourself. And if kids feel good about themselves, they will be ultimately religious. If not today, tomorrow. It's just a matter of time. And that's what we have to do with social shut. We have to make, create an environment where the young people in particular are feeling good, whether they daven for three hours, four hours, or one hour, or no hours, is secondary. Let them feel good about being a yid. And once they feel good, they'll, they'll come to you. They'll come. If not to a parent, they'll come to a friend. If not to a friend, they'll come to a mentor. If not to a mentor, they'll come to someone else. You'd rather have that than, 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 than feeling alienated or feeling empty, feeling with a low self-esteem and just wasting their time. So we have a lot of, on our plate for Shoshana. You know, we have a lot on our plate. The fact that we've celebrated it for 50, 60, 70 years of our life, whatever it is, it's a new year. It's a new year. It's like you've never celebrated. You have to go on, we have to go into Rosh Hashanah like we've never celebrated Rosh Hashanah. It's the first Rosh Hashanah of my life. That's not from today till next uh, Wednesday night. Think about this. It's all new. What is Rosh Hashanah? Right? It's really called, it's really like Rosh Chodesh, but we don't, we don't emphasize the Rosh Chodesh. What's Rosh Chodesh? Rosh Chodesh is like a new head. A new head. It's new. It's brand new. You've never used it before. It's a new situation. It's not just, is there a Rosh Hashanah? And it's a regular day. And, you know, it's a tourist garden, and like parasols, and blah, blah, blah. And then there's Rosh Hashanah. No, 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 no. The transition. From 5,777 to 5,778 is an ad infinitum leap. It's a new experience if you make it new. If you, and by the way, the Kabbalah says, the Balatanya brings it in the fourth section of Tanya, Geras HaKodesh 14. It speaks about this, by the way, that every Rosh Hashanah, a new light comes into the world. Very important, maybe you want to look it up after, you know, after the class or later. Every Rosh Hashanah, a new energy comes into the world, and it's solidified through our prayers, Tkiya Shofar, and our Tshuva. Story, and with that I conclude. My father grew up in this country from 1949 to 1958, after, you know, he came from Romania, post-Holocaust. He had a, an, an aunt who was childless and who wanted a child. And they were, they were from the Vizhnitz dynasty. But, you know, any, any tzaddik that can, 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 can create, can, can get the Hashem to, to give the bracha is fine. And they knew that their, my father was learning a Lubavitch yeshiva and became a Lubavitcher. So my father said to my aunt, would you like me to write a letter to Lubavitcher for a bracha for you to have a child? I said, sure. He wrote a letter, and the Rebbe answered that his aunt and her husband should review the laws of family purity, Taras HaMashpach. They, they were very pious, but you know, everyone needs a review. So they reviewed the halachas again. Six months went by, no child. So my father came to his mashpia, his teacher, Rabbi Shleba Chaim, and my father asked him, wrote to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said what to do, and they did that, they reviewed the halachas, but just, 
still not pregnant. So Rav Shleim Chaim said to my father, you know, you wrote the letter now. The, the, the first letter was written in whatever year it was. I want you to write again to the Rebbe the following year with the change of Rosh Hashanah. My father said, fine. He wrote to the Rebbe, and this time there was no response. Now, the story has a sad ending, but the message is, is positive. A tzaddik can only give a bracha when he sees or feels that there's a bracha in heaven for that particular thing. This is an abracadabra here. It's if Hashem from on high has given a bracha for that particular thing, then the tzaddik can bring it from on high into the world. Right? There is the world of ruchni, spirituality, and there's the world of gashmias. Sometimes the bracha is in the realm of the ruchnius. And what the tzaddik does is the tzaddik takes it from the ruchnius and puts it into the bank, puts it into the real world where you can cash out on it, and then the bracha comes into real life. Shleim Chaim to explain to my father, the teacher, his teacher explained. My father asked, asked him, why did the Rebbe give my aunt a bracha the previous year, and this year he didn't give even a bracha? And he said that from on high, the tzaddik, didn't, the Rebbe didn't see this year that there's a bracha for children. Last year he did see, for whatever reason it didn't come, but he couldn't give you this bracha this year. Now let's reverse that, in the, in, in, let's reverse it in the positive. There could be something that this particular year we wanted a bracha for. We davened, we asked tzaddikim, we went to kvarim, we learned to daven our own, we gave tzedakah, and the bracha didn't come. Now it's a new year. There's a new light. There's a new kayak that comes into the world. So the fact that last year you didn't have a bracha for it doesn't mean to say this year you cannot have a, you, then you won't have a bracha for it. This year is an or chadash. I'm not, not joking. I'm not saying this just to make you feel good. This is what it says in the in the svarim. It's called the or chadash, the new light, and the new light is not limited by the previous year. It it makes no difference what happened the previous year. It's not contained and created by the previous year. It's created by this year. So everyone should know that. That there's an Or Chodesh coming into the world this Rosh Hashanah, particularly during the night. It's a very special time, the first night. So please make special, don't waste your time on silly conversation, but it should be focused on Rosh Hashanah in a, in a positive way with, with your guests and your people. And then during davening in the morning, with the tkiyas, make of it uh, a special time, and then Mitzvah Shem, whatever the bracha everyone needs, whatever we need in our lives, we, you know, and by the way, don't take too much. It's <laughs> faster, maruba, want to faster. Kind of focus on one thing. You know, if you have to pick between health, children, parnasa, this or that, of course you want everything, you know, but try to Ask Hashem Bechlau to improve your life in every way, but in particular, begin with, with one thing. And whatever that thing is, ask Hashem. It's a new year. I, I, I'm yours, Hashem. I am yours. You are mine, and I am yours. I'm, I am submitting to you. I am giving myself over to you. Whatever you want, I'm going to do. And, and if, I, if I fail, I'm going to try again, you know? If I, and please understand that I'm a human being and I'm, I have failure, but I'm going to try. If I, if, I get, if I don't get up in the morning for a minute, I'm going to try the next day. If I, can't come to the, if I don't come to the cuddle one day, I can come the next day, I'm going to do that. But I don't want to do it Hashem sees that you're trying. Hashem sees that you mean it. He says, oh. So, everyone should have a short of time in Sukkah, Tzimah Tzimah Tzimah, a good good bench in your, and Shabbos Lichas. It's the beginning. Right to my soya menucha, kida menucha, trilo. A my soyish menucha, mozoe, shabbos called menucha, kida menucha, trilo. I come before you, I precede you, Hashem. I'm coming to you early. Rosh is Wednesday night, I'm coming to you very much of Shabbos. I'm beseeching you very much of Shabbos. I know, I know it's business time, it's show time. <laughs> Go with Simcha, go with joy. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is, loves us, we love Him, and don't even give us a good Gebench to Yom. Amen. 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 Amen.